Hello everybody and welcome to Toya and Robert's Object of Desire. A few more precious things from Toya and Robert this week. Well, I always say you are my object of desire and you remain so. But I'm going to be talking about a very special time in my life. It was 1979 into 1980 and I had a resident artist who followed me around drawing me. He was called Dexter Brown. He's still around. He's still incredibly successful. He is mainly known for drawing motor cars and motor races. He's an impressionist, but his drawings are in movement. So he used to stand at the side of the stage and draw me throughout the concerts. Wow. And the amazing thing was, I never was aware of him looking at me. Sometimes we're both a bit pernickety about photography when you've got someone on stage with a camera you can physically feel them you yes. know that feeling yes i do well with dexter he was an absolute joy to know he was sitting on a stool at the side of the wings and he was just doing this and he's just doing that so this is the cover to um a relatively famous live album I did in 1980 called Toya, Toya, Toya. And Dexter did these drawings live in time, in real time, in situ as I was performing. That's me at the Lyceum opening for the Psychedelic Furs. And they're just the most amazing, and I own these now, I own those particular paintings. So in 1981, when I started to make a lot of videos for my music, Dexter would come to the video shoots and draw us shooting the videos. So this is me shooting Thunder in the Mountains on a disused airfield in Welland Garden City. This was directed by Godly and Cream of 10cc, and this is Dexter's impression of me on that chariot. Wow. I am so proud of the work I have by him. I'm so proud of the relationship, the creative relationship I had with him. And I have never experienced anything quite so rewarding as his presence. Wow. He contributed. He really contributed. I could see my music move through him, through his arms, into his hand and onto the page. Wow. It was a beautiful transition and translation. It was incredible. It taught me so much, ironically and fabulously, about theatre, about how theatre can transcend and transform the audience. Mm. And that was my experience of Dexter Brown. Wow. You're sitting here with nothing in your hands, Mr. Well, Frick. little lovey, my, um, my precious things, my objects of desire are not in this house. They are in my office next door. Oh, shall we go there? Let's go there. See you in a second. So here we are in the underground tunnels of our offices. We're deep underground now. And Mr. Fripp, what is your object of the desire? Objects of desire this week is the original artwork to In the Court of the Crimson King, painted by Barry Godber at the age of 23 in 1969. It's huge. Yes, and this was hanging uh, by a window with light pouring onto the artwork, the watercolour artwork, for several years in the EG offices on King's Road. And I said to them, if you leave the artwork there being bleached by the light, I will take them. Nothing changed, so I took them. And this is the front cover. And it's obviously watercolour bug for it to have faded that way, but yes. I'm sure our restorer could improve that. Well, in terms of digital artwork for album covers, we can deal with it. And Stand this, close to the picture, baby. And this is the inside cover. It's phenomenal. It's remarkable. It's an absolutely beautiful composition. I adore it. This one isn't so badly faded. Yeah, I agree. Barry Gard died at the age of 24 in 1970. Well, did he leave more than these paintings? No, not that I'm aware of. Well, it's a wonderful legacy he left behind. Thank you, Barry. 
Well, thank you, and thank you, Robert. So that is our Objects of Desire for this week. Stay safe, everyone. We're thinking of you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And don't forget, tomorrow, there is going to be an absolutely crazy Sunday lunch. Lots of love from Robert, too. <laughs>